So this is a follow-up to uh, the repair video I made on my iMac uh, where the screen got a defect. Level the power supply works. And that's no good. It would fix it. So if it's something underneath, I am screwed. Uh, if it's something on top, I might be able to put a little bit of light pressure on it. But I can't see a thing. This looks absolutely perfect. So not to worry, the Mac is repaired and has a beautiful new screen and I can edit my AGC videos in style. And in the process, I got the old screen to tear down. So I was going to take it apart to figure out if we can find what actually happened to it. So there are several versions of these. Uh, you can see the serial number on that one, or the product number is on the top. And they're actually not all compatible. And the good thing is that I don't have to be careful about it. Okay, so this is the driver board, so it has an LVDS input. I haven't looked at the protocol, but there's a lot of pixels, so there's a lot of serialization going on. Probably a deserializer, all kind of power supply chips. I have to get Ken to look at all this and identify what all these chips do, but obviously there's some power stuff going on and there must be a lot of driver chips because eventually every one of those thousands and thousands of pixel columns has to be addressed individually. The connections are done on this uh, flex circuits are very fine pitch and on that side I looked at under the bino and there was no damage. And I brought the bino just to inspect again the uh, connections but you'll see there is nothing wrong there. So if you look in here you can see the fine pitch uh, flex connection and there is a slight misalignment of a few mils but it's all fine. In every Every connection connects to where it should be. We that is. They do know how to use tape. Uh, I think there's a connector down there. And all the taping operations that must be done by hand. I don't know how you can automate that. So they must have lots of fun. Assembling these. Okay, so that's the that's the cable for the LEDs. Well, some interesting fabrication techniques. Uh, and it's fairly high. Oh, look at that! It's shielded. It's conductive inside. It's obviously some material with a, some conductive thing woven or plated onto it. It's a woven material. So more of that taped and glued fabrication. Okay, I don't see any screws in here. Oh, the screws are down here. All right. That's the background panel, that's the one that does the illumination. Okay, so this hidden screw. So there is no way I'm putting this thing back together. Impossible. Okay. So look at this. It's so that's the back panel illumination and it's completely uniform. You look at it and you can see absolutely nothing. You can't quite tell where it is. It's really remarkable. And this is engineered, optically engineered to the nth degree. So that's 
the diffuser so there is the dull surface and the shiny surface so this is all microstructured well this is the plant okay and this is either a piece of glass or plastic with also some microstructure on it so the LEDs are over here, uh, way at the back. Shoot, I should have found a way to power this up. This must be quite spectacular when powered up. And the thing, this is genius. And the thing has some micro diffusion pattern etched. Most probably laser etch at the back that will diffuse the light progressively the other way the haze you see is at the back and it's it's not just haze it is micro etched it has a pattern to it I don't know how they etch it no laser etched very fine structure oh haha I know we'll look at it through the microscope this is even cleverer than I thought these are micro dots and there's a pattern and the micro dots grow bigger and denser as you go over here because of course here you have lots of lights so you only want to diffract a little bit up to the top and or diffuse a little bit up to the top and here you have less and less and less light so to maintain uniformity you have to grow the size of your micro dots it's almost a crime to take this apart so i couldn't see them against the white because this white is so freaking reflective let's see if i can see it yes now i can i don't know if you can see the dots little i would say laser etched dots and let's see if i can move out over here and you can see the difference in the dots all right hold on a second i need to Oh yeah, you can see it right here. See how the dots are bigger? And that must be calculated so when you go across this, the light that reflects is absolutely constant. So big dots here, small dots here. Okay, let's see if we can peel this onion further. So here I have a little problem because there is a thin layer of glue somewhere. I'm very sorry. I apologize to the engineers that designed this and the assemblers that put it together. I am ruining your work of art. Okay, so that's the micro diffuse plate. And next is something pearlescent, very, very white. The similar thing is so incredibly white. You, the, the, your depth perception gets screwed up. You don't know where it is. Okay, wait. There are more layers. And after the diffuser layer, there's this thing. Wow. Which is a, a lens focusing layers of Fresnel lens also etch plastic there you go. and oh there is one more there is another diffuser all right and is that it okay I wish I could power up those LEDs and Illustrated that should be superb. Let me try to figure something out. It took me a long way to figure this out. It's very silly how they they, they connect the LEDs, and um, but I figured it out. And then you need lots of voltage, so I need 60 volt, or only 50. But here you go. Okay, now I have two power supplies in series, so I can go above the threshold here we go we should have about 60 milliamps a little bit more there we go that's how it's supposed to chooch okay 
let's try this once again with all the layers. So we go about 60 volts. We get our waveguide and laser etch diffusing plate. The diffuser. I think the camera is a bit overwhelmed here, so I will try to. It's hard to reproduce what you see. What I see is a lot brighter, something like that. And then the fan lens. So that should focus the light. Yeah. So that's the problem, is that now the light, you see, it's all focused in front. Oh, that's going to be harder to... Oh, that's... So they did a trick on me. Let me try that. There we go. So now, this is the equivalent of putting a lens in front of it. Uh, right. All right. And then... The diffuse it a second time, this direction, I think. There you go. Right, and that's your final screen. So, this is quite a complicated arrangement. The optical engineers have really worked on that one. It's just the, the refinement that they have arrived to, and then that's the most impressive piece. That's a laser etched waveguide plate with little dots, and you can see the density of dots is higher here than it's there, so that it diffuses lights you know, both ways, actually, like up and down. Mm -hmm. And while it's guided, you can see how it's guided through the edge, so that the light can never escape this way. Mm -hmm. The only way you can escape is up or down, it's guided. And then so the density of dots is calculated so when you lose light, you make your dot bigger so you diffract so more of it. So these are what direct this light? Yeah. Up, up and down. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you remove it, nothing. And then we, we confirm that the last layer is actually the polarizer. So it's before it enters the LCD screen, it's polarized. So this one, oops, let's see if I can remove it. This is unpolarized, and this is polarized. So look, look at the fun you can have with polarized lights and 3D glasses. That, that's my favorite when it's all black and then you insert quarter wave in it and it becomes yes. transparent which is too much fun it's the magic of uh, polarization yeah so th these things are a polarizer plus a quarter wave so they are kind of complicated they don't they don't they're not symmetric mm -hmm. oh here you go duck flip them i should make a video on that it's your little lcd fingers this is so Looking much fun yourself. Okay, I found a way to do it. It's pretty darn good glue, but with a blade you can get underneath it. I think I got it. Okay, it's a two layer thing. And I think my problem is right here on the other side of the glass. And indeed, I have finally found my problem. So it's on this flex over here. And what has happened is that when I push my card, I made a little neck into that one. So I, I push too far. And you can tell exactly what's going wrong. And pretty hard to see with my stupid camera arrangement I should get the, my microscope camera in here but 
there is a little neck in the uh, flex and it's actually broken. But here's my problem. I nick the flex right here and it nicked whatever the few columns that, that were connected right there. Uh, and that was not from bending the thing, that was in the step where I uh, was trying to get the uh, adhesive out and I was pushing my, uh, my plastic card I was using in the credit card format and I just pushed a little too far. Okay, I think we got the pixels. Here we go. So, and they are very small. Okay, I'm just going to ramp up the magnification. Now they're getting bigger. bigger what objective is that I can't tell that 40 20 yeah that's the times 20 so times 20 times 15 times whatever the magnification of the screen is so about three four hundred and this is about a thousand beautiful little pixels and they, are, they have all a special shape to them, I don't know why. Uh, and the... One of the amazing things is how little space is lost between the pixels. Not only they are very, very small, but there is very little lost for the lines in between the pixels. So that makes those, those displays extremely bright. Alright, so that's it or the teardown of the amazing 5K uh, 27 inch screens from my dead iMac screen. So there I've, I've made a new application out of it. This is now a, a cinema light or a photography light or whatever. <laughs> Reuse.